What is up, guys? Welcome to the Think Computers Weekly Tech Podcast. This is episode 392, and our podcast this week is brought to you by Yeean. You can go to yeeangaming.com and see all of the uh, stuff they have to offer. I am here with Ryan. I was going to do a proper introduction, but since we're talking about Yeean, right. um, Ryan was kind of introduced to Yeean at yeah. CES, I think. Yeah, so. you surprised me here, too. I didn't realize we were... Uh... They were going to yeah. be a sponsor right yeah, now. Yeah, they're so. a sponsor for this week of the podcast. Um, they have nice. some really cool stuff, and I think they're doing do. um, some pretty interesting stuff. You know, when they for we first I first started talking to them mm -hmm. um, the middle of last year, and I thought they were just like like a cyber power, right? Like a custom builder, and and we're definitely all for that, at, you know. Um, but then they they started you know doing their own products, and they have a full line right. of of products, and they're all the products have like really great specs and they look really good and they're doing some stuff that like you just wouldn't expect. Like we saw a 420 millimeter radiator AIO from them, you know, it's yeah, like, that's yeah. not very common. Um, we saw an OLED display and we'll definitely get into all of that as well, but um, check them out. If you're looking to get a custom PC made, you can customize your own PC. They have a ton of other products, like I said, including AIOs. We saw some really cool keyboard uh, in mice they pretty much make everything. They're just kind of under the radar a little bit because they're just a new brand coming into like the North American market. So, so yeah, check them out. Um, and like I said, they sponsored the show. So, uh, show, you know, definitely, uh, show them some love, but, uh, we're back. We're, we're back from Vegas, Ryan, you know, yeah. I, I think Ryan's pretty happy to see me. He, he lived with me for a week <laughs> in Vegas and, uh, you know, we are, uh, you had a couple days apart. Now he's happy to see me again. So yeah, yeah, it's great. I'm, are you, I'm are you feeling any better? Ryan had that's, a little bit of the CES sickness. That's what I was going to say. Like, I think it was maybe Wednesday evening, Thursday, like Thursday and Friday. I just felt crummy and Saturday. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty much good to go. Um, it wasn't anything terrible. Um, you know, I think it just, yeah, it seemed like you just were just a little like, bit of a cold. Yeah. You had like a weather. slight cold, but you did, you weren't like, sick like i know some people that it, like got like sick sick i know some people yeah, that no. end up getting uh the c word you know um yep. but nope, yeah, not, nothing, nothing on my part which is which is good um typically i am every year sick but i did like this year i was like i'm not gonna get sick i made sure you saw me You're every morning up. making my making my green juice in the morning yeah. and doing all that um but see i feel i feel this year ces was like really good like as far as like us not being i would say like overworked or stressed out i would yeah, say this the meeting schedule was good everything was yeah out. i feel like and again this is like i'm gonna toot my own horn but i feel like i scheduled everything really yeah. well so we weren't like running around from meeting to meeting i also feel that using the osmo pocket 3 uh which we yeah, talked about on this changer. podcast made made everything so much easier we weren't worrying about gear we weren't worrying if like the shot's good or not because like we just knew the shot was going to be fine um that all worked out good we had a slight issue with the mic but we fixed that the second day um so yeah i think everything went great we saw some awesome people too um of course all of our friends like at all the brands that we work with but on top of that like we saw the guys from uh tech power up from wccf tech from tweak town uh, who else did we see? We saw Hardware uh, Asylum, Hardware Asylum, Tech Testers. We saw the yeah. uh, TikTok. I ran guys. into Linus in the hall. Yeah, he, Ryan had to get a picture <laughs> I with Linus. Costed him and he be a picture. fanboy with Linus. <laughs> um, the uh, Asian JC on TikTok. We also saw uh, John John from TikTok. We saw a lot yeah. of really cool people. I think that's the best part of CES is seeing everybody right because like you interact with these people on social media and then you get to see them in person either if you're meeting them for the first time or it's somebody you've known for years it's kind right. of like a reunion of all the tech people and i think that's the best part about ces um so that was just so much fun seeing everybody and, and again meeting some people for the first time as well um yeah just a good just a good show uh we ate some good food as well um i took i took ryan to food. um Din Tai Fung, he liked it. Uh, Ryan's not big on expanding his horizons when it comes to that's, food. That's not true. That is so true. Um, so, yeah, we expanded his horizons, got him some soup dumplings and some other stuff. So, yeah, it was a really, it was a, like I said, really, really good week. Um, kind of like the first day back, I was kind of like sad to be back. So I was like, oh, I miss like checking out tech and 
covering the show, but at the same time, I was like, I'm so tired. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, yesterday was my first day back at work because we had Monday off uh, for the holiday and like getting up yesterday morning was rough. I was like, I do not want to roll. in. Yeah. But yeah, now we're getting back in the swing of things. Uh, this desk over here, I cleaned. Uh, if you've watched the podcast, this this has been a disaster area of sorts, and it's it has been cleaned, uh, which is good. Um, and then I have I have to clean the the tech cave that I call it my closet back there. That's just it's just boxes upon boxes that that will get cleaned out soon. Um, and just getting like, you know, getting everything organized. We have so much content that's going to be coming out as well. If you guys didn't see, like we pushed out, I don't know how many videos we pushed out during CES videos, articles, and like all the short form content. We have a ton more short form content from CES coming out. So definitely stay tuned for that. We dropped that first on TikTok and Instagram, uh, reels. And then it goes to YouTube Shorts, and we post it on Facebook and uh, X or Twitter. It is so weird because the whole show, we're like, oh, yeah, follow me on, on Twitter. They're like, but it's X. It's so weird to call it X these oh, yeah. days. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, lots of content coming out, and we have a lot of really cool products that we've had in for a while. There's some launches coming up as well for some pretty cool products as well that we're going to be working on. So lots of stuff. I'm really excited for 2024. I think it's going to be a big year uh, for for Think Computers and, you know, uh, just a just a lot going on. So I'm pretty excited uh, for everything. Yeah, but um, let's jump in. This is going to be our CES 2024 recap Uh episode i guess so everything that we're gonna be talking about this week is gonna be from ces uh we're not gonna talk about any of the news this week or any, any of our reviews really so everything here is uh from ces and again in no particular order either um but if you do want to follow along we do have our show notes page that has everything that we're going to be talking about this week and again there is a lot to talk about because there was a lot of stuff at ces but let's start with uh Yian. as we uh as i said they were kind of a new brand to ryan as he's adjusting his camera there yeah don't mind me yeah uh, but um but yeah they the the interesting thing i would say about ces this year was OLEDs were everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. And I think the big reason for that is because both LG and Samsung have put out really nice OLEDs that everybody's buying, right? So almost all of these OLEDs that aren't specifically from LG or Samsung are LG and Samsung panels that that other companies are using for their displays, which is really good because one if everybody's buying the same display, they're going to compete on price when it comes to you, yeah. the consumer, which is going to be really, really good. Um, so just to put that out there. Um, but yeah, so Yian, the big thing, one of my favorite things that they showed for me was their new monitor. This is an OLED, the OLED 45 inch. And I mean, it's a big monitor, has a nice curve on it. If you guys, I would say, watch our video in all of these articles, we, we, more or less have videos as well. Uh, watch the video to really see how these displays look. OLEDs are just, it just like, looks amazing. That contrast and the the black blacks and the like crispy white. Yeah, it's, yeah. they all looked great. Yeah, so this is, like I said, this is their 45 inch OLED display. Um, what are they? Yeah, they're shooting for around 1400 bucks, which <laughs> If you think about a couple of years ago, like all of these prices are going to be really, really good. Um, and this one is a QHD. So 2560 by 1440, 800R curve, 240 hertz refresh rate. Like think of all those specs, OLED, 240 hertz refresh rate, QHD, you know. Tons yeah. of ports. Yeah. Tons of, tons of ports on it as well. Um, 1400 bucks. And then they had... Yep super fast super super fast uh gaming monitor as well so this was their pro act series 25 inch hd so it's just a normal hd monitor but this right. is going to be 360 hertz refresh rate so for all of those playing you know counter strikes what is i guess two like counter strike 2 is out huh it is the, i haven't yeah I haven't even played it yet yeah, but like all you guys playing Counter Strike or super fast paced games, legends or yeah, yeah like you want a super 
fast refresh rate. This is going to be it. Um, yeah, 360 hertz. And like I said, it looked pretty nice there as well. Ryan, like I said, uh, these new AIOs, it seems like everybody had an AIO this year too with a yes. display on it. Yiyin was one of those. Um, they don't really have an official product name for these just yet, uh, but they will be available in April. You can kind of see the display there. And of course, you'll use their software to display kind of, you know, what you want on here. Um, not just system stats. You can display things like GIFs, movies, whatever it may be. Um, these are going to be available initially in 24360 with 420 and then a 480 millimeter one coming later for everybody uh, who really wants some, you know, some awesome cooling. And they do have ARGB fans there as well. Um, just look really good. I was like, I feel like the like, remember when these first came out, like they were kind of like, yeah. eh, like I think NZXT did NZXT, it right yep. first and theirs was really good. And there were some other ones that just like didn't look good. I feel like everyone that saw with the screen looked good. Yeah, everything looked good this year. Like everything's been refined. They also had a pretty affordable, all transparent keyboard, which was actually really nice. It was actually probably one of the, another one of the favorite things that I saw from them. One, I just like the way it looked. It has the pudding style keycaps that are clear on the bottom, so you get that really awesome glow when this thing is turned on. Wired or wireless mechanical key switches. It uses their own switch. Um, just a good overall keyboard. It's not all that expensive either. It's going to retail for 89 bucks. Um, so you have that. And then they had two different lightweight gaming mice. We have the Drift, which is right here, sort of like a plastic shell. But then they had the Dominate. Um, still only 58 grams, but it has, uh, what was it, magnesium? Yes, yeah, magnesium. Um, yeah, magnesium outer Jump. shell. Basically, it feels like cold on your hand a little bit, but it's like a, the good cold, if, if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, it just felt really, really good in the hand, completely wireless, just just a good feeling mouse. The other mouse is, uh, this one was only- It's 52. a little lighter, yeah. Yeah, 52 grams. So again, lightweight gaming mice they, they're going to offer as well. 79 for this one. The Dominate's going to be 129. And then they had a new case, which was really cool from the front. It has these sort of like. Uh, yeah, they're like tempered glass, like panels, louvers type. Yeah. And then they have like RGB or ARGB lighting that yeah. puts, you know, you can change it to do whatever you want, but it just looks really good on the front. You can get, they're going to sell this case as a standalone. But then if you're doing one of their custom systems, you can go ahead and get it in this case as well. So some really cool stuff from them. I'm excited for the OLEDs and, like I said, this keyboard and the mice. Um, yeah, really, really cool stuff from Yi. And like I said, in every article, we do have a video. So check out the video. It gives you more kind of clarity on everything that we are going to be talking about. So uh, and then probably this is like always our favorite and it's typically always the first thing that we get to see at ces because mm -hmm. samsung always does like a pre-ces event and this was their pre-ces event uh we got to check out every new monitor from samsung and it was it was awesome and i yeah. i love their sort of design on these the the new oleds we'll talk about all of them um but first we'll do the one that uh, it's just awesome. The the Odyssey OLED G9. So this is a 49 inch curved display, as you can see. But just like the styling on everything, just looks so good to me, in my opinion. Just yep, like they, sleek they good. and sophisticated. Um, it's gonna Super have thin. <laughs> DQHD, uh, which is 5120 by 1440, 32 by 9 aspect ratio, 240 hertz refresh rates um then it's an oled <laughs> like <laughs> yeah like what the, more specs, do you want, right? the specs are crazy on this um for you know this is going to be an awesome gaming monitor but again being 49 inches the same 49 inches that i have in front of me here it's going to be really good for multitasking and things like that which i think is really awesome now they have a oled g8 in an oled g6 the g8 again it's kind of again watch the video but these are so thin it's just wild now no curve on this one so the 49 has the curve the g8 does not have a curve it's a 32 inch monitor 
4K resolution, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, same 240 hertz refresh rate on this. Yeah, man. Do you, I really like, I think for a lot of gamers, especially like 32 and under, having no curve is kind of like, yeah. I don't know, just it seems like it makes a lot more sense than having the curve. Uh, at least to me. So we have that. And then they have the G6, which is going to be a new model. So the G6, 27-inch uh, monitor, 2560 by 1440, so 1440p, 360 hertz refresh rate. So this is the fastest re refresh that we saw from Samsung. Again, same styling, incredibly thin on this as well. Um, yeah, I, I really like, I think 20, 24, 27 is really, really good for super fast paced, super high refresh rate monitors. Um, and again, a lot of times with these high refresh rates, you only see like full HD 1920 by 1080, but you're right, getting a 1440p right. display uh, that does 360 hertz, which is just crazy. And I mean, I didn't even mention that it's an OLED too. So yeah. And you know, if you've played Fortnite, like the screen shot shows you know they had fortnite going on a lot of these the colors in there are so vibrant and it just looks so much better on an oled than like you know i came back and played some fortnite with my son and it was just like man this doesn't look as good as those ryan was having fun ryan was the demo person so he got to play yep. all the games so um and all of these displays have their new oled glare free technology as well mm -hmm. uh so you're not going to get as much of a glare which is kind of nice and then we had the Odyssey Neo G9. This has been out, but this is a 57-inch dual 4K display, uh, which is awesome. So the resolution on this is 7,680 by 2160, 240 hertz refresh rate on that. Um, they had it set up as a as a uh, racing sim, which was actually a lot of fun. That was a, a lot of fun to play. Uh, thousand R curve very immersive display but what's really cool about this is that it's basically like having two 4k monitors so you could if you're like a multi-gamer meaning you play on pc and you play on console you can have console on one side you can also have like your pc on the other and you can do them kind of together at once which is really cool um but again for big immersive experiences as well like racing sims flight sims this is going to be a great display there as well this is currently available and same thing with the odyssey arc uh probably one of my favorite displays of last year this is their gen 2 basically the same spec but now you can have four inputs on it so you know they're they're showing it with three different inputs right here but you can do up to four inputs now so it just gives you more flexibility with different devices that you may want to connect to it. Um, that is also currently available now. So some really awesome displays. And a lot of the displays that we're going to be talking about uh, today are based off yeah. Samsung Glass and, and all of that, which you'll see. So, so yeah, really cool. I don't know, Ryan, if you had a favorite from Samsung. Oh, that 49-inch was pretty sweet, like just experiencing yeah. that. But at the same time, so was the huge dual 4k in the racing sim right yeah um, i don't feel like i enjoyed it as much just because i was like focused on trying to like drive and i was really only looking in the middle <laughs> but that 49 inch and you're like looking for enemies on the screen and yeah. just the colors and the the title that you know, they were using that one is probably the best yeah for me gotcha gotcha um real quick in the chat because i always forget to read the mm -hmm. chat uh we have Corey in the chat we had uh, Nelson from Florida, of course, in the chat, and we had Jared in the chat as well. So good to see you guys here. Uh, we'll move on to Lenovo. So we got to see their new laptops. Uh, first, the Legion Pro 7i. This has been refreshed um, with, of course, new processors. So you're going to get the Core i9-14900HX and up to an RTX 4090 GPU. And surprisingly, like, it wasn't that thick i mean you picked it up it, oh. it wasn't yeah. necessarily that thick um yeah just a a good overall laptop i think uh, the legion line has gotten better over the years styling has got better as well of course you can see the rgb lighting on this um these are going to start at 2700 bucks so not cheap um but yeah, I really like the way that these look. I really like the 7i because the 7i you can get in the all white. So this is the all white version. Just looks awesome. Um, it looked very nice. 
Yeah. And the 7i is just a slight, slight step down. Um, you can still get it with the i9-14900HX, but you can only get it up to an RTX 4070. These will start at $2,100. 16-inch um, display, 165 hertz refresh rate on the 7i, and then the Pro will go up to a 240 hertz refresh rate uh, for everybody out there. So some really nice refreshes on the laptops. Again, I especially like the white on the Legion 7i. And one of the coolest things that we did see was their magic base so you can kind of see it here basically on on lenovo's thinkbook laptops they're gonna have this sort of connection at the top sort of like the bar normally where like your um your camera yeah. and stuff like that is but this is on the back side so this is on the lid and you see these little pogo style connections and when basically what they allow you to do is connect different devices so here's one of the here's one of the devices and you see the Pogo connections. And basically that allows you to attach them, you know, just, they just clip sort of right on to the laptop. And with that Pogo connection, that's all your connections. So this is like a webcam. You don't need any cables. You don't need anything. It's detected by the laptop automatically, which I thought was incredibly cool and just convenient. So this gives you like a better, uh, the, you know, all the thing books do have like a built-in, uh, webcam, but this gives you a better webcam. It's a 4K webcam with the speaker on it, uh, which is really cool. They had one that was just like an SSD. So you just like put the SSD right on there. But the coolest one for me was the external monitor. Uh, the external monitor was a 10.1 inch monitor. As you can see, just goes right on there. Again, no wires, nothing. Because with all those external displays, you need at least a USB type C cable, if not two, one to power it, and then one to bring the data over with this it just attaches and you're good to go so if you're on the plane or something like that you want to be a little bit more productive this makes it great now we don't know when or even if this display is coming out this right. was just kind of shown the possibility but i really like it and i just like it because like it eliminates wires it's the biggest thing right yeah a lot easier to pack yeah it's just like for things like you know even even in a portable SSD, you still have the USB type C cable. This, you just snap it right onto the back and, and you're good to go. So really cool uh, Magic Bay devices. And I, I'm really interested to see what other ones they kind of come out with. They also had a ThinkBook graphics extension. So this is made to work with their ThinkBook laptops. Again, external GPU enclosure. This one does use Oculink. So you are going to get the you know better bandwidth than you would get from Thunderbolt 4. Um, you know you can get it with an RTX 4060 Ti all the way up to a 4090, and they have a pretty interesting deal. So they're going to offer a ThinkBook 14 G6 Plus. That's their laptop, and they're going to bundle it with this enclosure with an RTX 4070 for $2,200 which is i still I can't get over that price <laughs> yeah um really so good. you're gonna you know you'll be able to have a think book that you can take on the road you can travel with but when you get home you have a full enclosure with a graphics card so you can play games you can connect multiple displays up to it it you know pretty awesome uh pretty awesome overall so yeah that's um there as well we'll move over to gigabytes in oris and they were showing displays as well uh some really awesome displays from them um they had their co 49 dq this was their big 49 inch oled dual qhd so 5120 by 1440 140 hertz four hertz refresh rate um this one's <laughs> Only going to be thirteen hundred dollars, which again, it's it's crazy. These prices are, yeah. and it might go lower because OLED pricing is going down currently. Right. So you could see this at like a thousand dollars. Yeah, I think yeah, I feel like that's what they were saying. It's like and like be right around that thousand dollar price, which is wild. I just I remember my display, this one that I have here. It was like a thousand dollars when I got it. And this is just a normal 49 inch, 120 hertz refresh rate. It's not an OLED, you know, uh, it's 1440p. Yeah. And now you're getting that exact same thing, but it's an OLED, 144 hertz refresh rate, like so much better tech in it. 
for around the same price now, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, so you have that one. Uh, like I said, it's it looks really, really nice. Um, then you had their FO32 U2P, uh, which you can see right here. No curve on this one. This is their 32-inch display, 4K resolution. Of course, it is an OLED 240 hertz refresh rate, shooting for 1299 um, on this. And this is their DisplayPort 2.1 um, display as well. So compatible with DisplayPort 2.1. Really, they were, I don't know what game this was. What game was this? That they were showing. I don't know. Was that Starfield? I, I have I have I not played so. Starfield, so I'm not sure what game. But it looked, it looked absolutely really cool. amazing yeah. on the on the display. So, um, just a again another awesome like it's so great that we're having so many OLED options too, right? It's not just like Samsung. It's like there's so many awesome OLED options now, yeah. and again they're all going to compete for price. So it's going to be you're going to find some really awesome deals. Um, and you'll be able to get a monitor that like fits your exact needs because like with the types and number of ports and like resolution size, we saw so many monitors and granted a lot of them are very similar or the same, but it just gives you so many options to like pick the monitor that's going to work best for you, which is yeah. just awesome. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, this is going to be a great year for monitors. They also had a, mo 34 wqc2 i think they need to come up with like different I, names. I swear i was writing i forget which one it was the other day i think it was the as as rock and their monitors yeah, yeah. which we'll talk about later the, yeah their monitors are so are, bad <laughs> right <yeah. laughs> um this one is a 34 inch display uh 3440 by 1440 21.9 uh 21 by 9 aspect ratio of course it is an oled uh, 240 hertz refresh rate on it. The cool thing about this one is it has a built-in KVM, so you can connect multiple devices to it, which is cool. Um, this one's going to be around a thousand dollars. Again, looking really good, uh, and that KVM is great if you use multiple devices. Uh, it's built into the monitor, so that's really cool. Um, and then they had a 27-inch monitor, 1440p. This is the FO 27Q3, 27-inch, 1440p, OLED, 360 hertz refresh rate. So we're seeing like kind of like the same thing throughout a lot of these companies. Yes. It's like they have the super ultra, they have like the super ultra wide, 49 at 240. Then they have a couple displays in the middle, like a 32, a 34. And then you have like either a 27 or a 24 that's like a super high refresh rate. So again, this one's right. going to be the uh, 360 hertz refresh rate. So Awesome monitors uh, from Gigabyte Norris. Um, yeah, man. This is like I said. Are you, this is the series you that upgrade was the your main monitors. piece, right? Yep, yep. Are you gonna Are you gonna upgrade? I, you know, I don't know. Maybe it. It's tempting. All right, all right. but it, I mean, if I do, I'll only do it once I have a new GPU, right? To take okay. advantage of some yeah. refresh refresh rate, probably. Okay. Okay. Um, moving on, of course, we saw Asus as well, and they had a bunch of different things. Um, like, again, OLEDs. Uh, this one was crazy. This is their ROG Swift OLED PG27 AQDP. This is a 26.5 inch QHD display, so it's 26, 2560 by 1440, but it is. 480 hertz yep. and they had like the time or this what is this called time testers or whatever it's called no, let's see uh uh ufo test yeah but it's but it's, it's by time testers or whatever oh yeah, yeah. yeah. i forget who um said. and you could you can tell the difference believe me you can tell the difference oh, yeah. um so 480 hertz in an oled which is crazy um yeah super super fast on that one well, it has like it's really bright. It's got all these like, you know, just display HDR True Black 400 compliance, 99 yeah. percent um, ratings. You know, it's just like not only is it fast, it it looks good too. The image, yeah, so, and like you kind of tell in this picture again. Watch our video, but like the black is black, like right. You know what I mean? It's yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, and then they had a 39 inch uh, display. This is their 
RG Swift OLED PG39 WCDM. 39 inch OLED. Again, this is their uh, 3440 by 1440, 800R curve. This is kind of like an interesting one. And we saw it with Yin as well. Like that 800R curve is getting really popular for a single display. Um, 240 hertz refresh rate on this, like Ryan said, uh, that true, the true black 400, as well as 1300 nits on this. Um, this thing looked amazing as well. And they did have it. Uh, so they're going to come out with a monitor arm as well. Uh, you can kind of see it right here. So you're going to have like a ROG monitor arm. Um, and they didn't tell us how much it supports, but they had this, uh, what is this? A 38, uh, 39 inch monitor on it. So it's going to support a lot of weight. Um, so it's pretty cool to see there, but this, this looked absolutely amazing too. And, um, the arm wasn't like you had to like, just not touch it and leave it. Like you could move it and it, it, it's not, it's not like you move it and it starts to sag. It was like tuned. So yeah, yeah, it was, was, it was a nice monitor arm, uh, that they had there as well. And then they had the really interesting one and we've seen it. We saw a couple of these. We actually talked about it right before CES. Uh, this is their ROG Swift OLED PG32 UCDP. So this is a 32-inch display. As you guys can kind of see, no curve on this one. Um, but it can either be 4K or it can be 1080p, and you can switch between them. So the 4K will do 240 hertz, but the Full HD will do 480 hertz. And this is that LG panel that can do that um we still we talked when we talked about this panel initially we're like we don't know how it works but it works yeah 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 i mean it looked good like you could switch between modes yeah and it's functional like it's it's pretty I, cool I, very I versatile think, i yeah i do think that's great because i think with a lot of displays like if you do the super high refresh rate you're typically not getting like in OLED, you're typically not getting some of the other features, but to be able to, you know, have have two different resolutions, maybe 4K, you want to just watch media or something, but obviously you're not going to push 4K at 480 hertz with like current hardware. So you turn it down to full HD, you get your super high refresh rate for all your gaming. Like it, it worked, you know, it's pretty cool. So that's going to be an interesting monitor. And a couple other people are using this panel from LG as well. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out there. Um, and we got to see the ROG NUC. So if you guys didn't know, Intel sold off their NUC business. Uh, that's next unit of computing. It was just like their little mini PCs. We saw them for a long time. They did have gaming versions. Yep. Um, but, but Asus is kind of taking it to the next level. Um, so this is a 2.5 liter chassis. It's basically like a gaming laptop in this form factor. That's that's the best way to kind of explain it. Um, just a little little device that, I mean, super easy to take this with you if you really wanted to, yeah. but at the same time, very powerful. Um, so it's going to support Intel Core Ultra 9 processors as well as RTX 47, uh, 4070 graphics on here. Three Gen 4x4 M.2 slots on here, DDR5, Thunderbolt 4, USB 3.2 Gen 2. Like everything you want yep. is going to be in this yeah, for like the most you said, part. It's like it'll give you better gaming performance than a, like a gaming laptop, but not quite the level of a, a desktop. So it's like in between yeah. there, right? Um, which is actually a pretty nice. It's still portable, right? So yeah. You could almost treat it like a laptop if you had a, a, a screen you were able to bring with you as well, if you needed a little more performance, but very cool. And I think this is great for people who just like, they don't want to build their own computer. They, <laughs> don't, they don't necessarily want something big, like a pre-built either, but this gives yep. you the kind of in-between where you can play games, especially like if you're using like a an HD display, 1920 by 1080 with this would be fine. Oh yeah. I, yeah. You could even do 1440 in a lot of instances with this. And it's small and compact and it's, you know, it, it's hard to break too. like a, you get a pre-built, you kind of tinker around in there and you could mess something up with this. You're not opening this up very yeah. easy. And again, um, they might sell like a bare bones unit where like you can install your own M.2 slot, you know, in your memory and some other stuff. Um, but it's supposed to come out late Q1. So it'd be interesting to see. And it's, it's nice to see that Asus didn't just take that NUC brand and like, oh, we'll, we'll come out with the same Nux yeah. that were kind of 
coming out. Nothing kind of exciting, but this is kind of exciting. Uh, ROG Nuck, I kind of like it. Yep. Um, then they had so then they had some um AIOs, their ROG Strix LC3 ARGB, and then their ROG Strix LC3 um non-LCD version. They're basically the same. Um, but the cool thing about these, and you have to watch the video, but like you can take this top part off completely um and you can adjust it and move it around it, it they're they they are really nice the displays that we talked about really really nice as well uh white and black versions up to 360 millimeters um on both of those so this one has a display and then this one uh just has like uh rog logo and what's nice about this one too is again you can take the the this top cap off but you can also move it so I'm sure you've installed AIOs that have like a logo and sometimes that logo is not straight. So yeah. you can move this around. So your logo straight, depending in, it doesn't matter the orientation of your build either. Like if you are doing like an inverse motherboard or something like that, you can move this around. So you, again, you can see the logo the way it's supposed to be shown. So that, and then they had something really cool because we don't know Asus for what, for, standalone custom right. water cooling for the most part right yep um well this looks very much like the screen and it is the exact same screen that's on the ryujin aios but asus was like hey <clears throat> nobody's putting an lcd on a custom water cooling block nobody's doing it so they made their own custom water cooling block that's going to have this big LCD on it. Um, you being the the water cooling guy, what do you think of what do you think about this? I like it. I think it's neat. Um yeah, it's just like that next evolution, right, of water blocks. You know, a long time ago we just had your bare bare minimum, then you get some transparent plexi or something over it so you can see the liquid. Then we've added some RGBs. This is just the next step, right? Comes with some fittings as well, um, so you don't have to worry about that. Looked really nice. The screen was amazing. I would, I think it's it's a way of like, because right now, like you said, we don't have any like this. You have to get a, a all in one in order to get an LCD screen like this, unless you like put something together yourself mm -hmm. and put like a just a screen there somehow. Um, Do you think ASUS will will go hard into the custom water cooling game? I don't know. I mean, they've done some of their, you know, they offer some video cards that have the water block on them. And uh, yeah, um, a and lot of times those are... obviously do. So, yeah. And I do have to say, like the engineering in their hybrid cards is amazing from yeah. a water cooling standpoint. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, it, probably, it, it probably wouldn't be too much more work to have them, you know, come out with uh, a radiator yeah. design and um a pump and after that they've got everything else yeah you know be uh be interesting to see but uh ryan does have the ryogen 3 uh in to review so it'll be interesting to see what that looks like um and how that performs and of course how the screen looks as well like i'm really excited to see yeah. what that screen looks like uh so that'd be kind of cool as well so that was asus a lot of cool stuff uh from them again like they're one of our favorites to go visit uh, we'll move on to Cooler Master. We had two different videos and two different articles to kind of separate the products uh, that they did offer. So the first one is going to be their cooling products. So they have a new AIO. This is their Master Liquid 360 Ion 2.1 inch uh, display on here. It looked great. And it has this, they have this like sort of outer ring thing that kind of goes around it. It kind of, separates it from all the other ones i would say it just like looks looks different um again it's going to be a 360 but i believe you can get it in a 240 as well um it does have uh mo their new mobius 120 millimeter argb fans on it too so it's gonna have really great performance uh they're shooting for q2 for it for around 250 bucks um, and then they had their Project G11. This was really interesting, high-performance AIO as well. As you can see, no RGB lighting or anything like that. This is, again, their Mobius fans. Same one that was on their uh, Master Air 
MA824 Stealth that we recently reviewed. Uh, these are really high performance and quiet fans. But this one's really interesting. So this is called Project G11. It's an all-in-one uh, liquid cooling unit, but it has two pumps in the housing itself with a dual chamber design. Basically, one pump is for the uh, cold liquid. One pump is for the hot liquid. Um, and I believe that they have the patent for that design. Yeah, I think um, so. So they're so nobody else is going to come out with something like this. So these work together, and there are fans sort of like in yep. this housing that will cool off your VRM and everything around the CPU as well. Uh, they're shooting to uh, be able to support up to or to cool up to 320 watts. Um, they say end of 2024 for this, but this is going to be. I think a lot, like with what we currently have in the high-end coolers, um, I think it's why you're seeing a lot of people have to do, like a lot of people are coming out with a 420 for overclocking something like a i9 14900K, right? It just gets super hot. But something like this will keep you in 360, which keeps you in more cases because not all cases will support a 420. Uh, this, this will be a, a nice solution for a lot of people. And for people who just like don't want the RGB or anything like that. This will be a, yeah, a good solution. It's not flashy, um, but yeah. it's still really nice looking cooler. Yeah. And then we have their Project VGA cooler. This was super cool. Um, basically, what you do with this is that it's an extension bracket that you buy that, that comes with everything. It comes with two of the Mobius 120 millimeter fans, and it goes on your graphics card. But the cool thing is that you won't void your graphics card warranty. So typically when you buy like an aftermarket cooler for a graphics card, it attaches to the PCB itself. This doesn't. Basically, you just take the shroud off of your current graphics card, which won't void your warranty. And then all you do is you attach this to this bracket over here that you attach in your case, and it puts the fans on top of your graphics card. Really cool solution. They're shooting for around 40 bucks. It should be out around Computex time. But I think this is really good because, again, it doesn't void your warranty, which yeah. you, you get into that when it comes to aftermarket cooling solutions. So this is a good solution um, for cooling. And then they have a new air cooler. Uh, this is their MA824 XT Stealth. Uh, so we already we just reviewed the MA824 Stealth. The XT Stealth is slightly different, but... Um, one, they have this and it's, you can't, it's even hard to see in the video. Um, but this outer top, uh, plate here, it's going to have this new sort of chameleon sort of paint on it. That's going to change color based on the temperature. So that's going to be pretty interesting. They also changed the heat pipe layout. So it's a combination of six millimeter and eight millimeter yes. heat pipes, I yep. believe. And they changed the pitch design on the heat sinks themselves. Um, those are the big changes. So it should be even better performance overall. Still going to be the same price as the MA824 Stealth. So it's still 100 bucks available in April. And then they have their new Mobius 360 fans. So a lot of the fans that you see, you know, we've seen this year are the ones that like snap together. These come in, in a three pack that is just all one piece, make it super easy to install. So you have the normal ones, which are right here, the Mobius, and then you have the Mobius ARGB if you want some RGB lighting. But again, just makes it super easy to install these. It's one piece. You put it there for your 360. They will offer it in a 240 as well um, and 280 as well. So these should be available in Q3. And then they had a really interesting M.2 uh, cooler that uses a vapor chamber on it. And a lot of like, you'll see, we're going to talk about some of the M.2 coolers that are like this thick. They're wild. Yeah. This thing is like your normal size of an M.2. It's it's very small and compact. Um, and it's because they're using vapor chamber technology. So that will be coming later in the year as well. Um, so stay tuned for that, for all of those, all the people who don't, who want like a Gen 5 SSD that's, Again, you don't want not like a three inches tall. Yeah, uh, so they'll have that as well. So some really cool cooling stuff here from Cooler Master. They also uh, have some in the 
the desk accessory I thought was really interesting. So yeah. this was their pro station. It's pretty, pretty interesting device. So it looks like this. It looks like a it's like a monitor riser. Yeah, like a monitor stand. And those are pretty yeah. common, right? Yep. But one, there's speakers here. So there's 20 watt speakers on here, which is pretty interesting. There's a wireless charger right here. But then on the back, you have a built-in KVM on it. And then on this side, on the back, there's like a power station. So you plug in power, and then it gives you four more power ports on this side. There's also a fan in the center that pushes air up because a lot of these new OLED displays, like they get hot. So it it's a fan that pushes air up to cool off your display. But on top of that, it has this little display down here, which is a touch screen. You can go through different menus. You can set different things. It also controls the KVM. So you can switch your outputs. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it. And of course, it has some lighting on it as well. Um, lots of stuff going on with this. It is rather expensive. It's, I believe it's $599. Um, it's going to be coming later this year as well. So expensive, but ha again, has a lot going on. And then and you can see the display uh, of it right here. Pretty, like I said, pretty cool little device. And then they had their master hub, which is like their take on a streaming device. Um, and they're going to sell it like this. This is their streamer package. It has what, one, two, three, four. four. So 15 um, of these keys, of course, they're going to display whatever you uh, are doing. So like, here's one for Chrome. Here's the Cooler Master logo, like YouTube. Like you can set all of these yourself. These are two rollers. And then you have these uh, volume sort of, uh things here but the cool thing about th their design compared to like a stream deck or some of the other ones that we've seen is that everything here is modular so you can take this piece off and move it you can add different things like here's some other ones that they have you can put these on here so it's always evolving which is kind of nice because like you have a stream deck like it's just the stream deck like you can't add on to it necessarily yeah. i mean i can customize what the buttons do yeah but they're still just a button. Whereas with this, you've got buttons and rollers and sliders and knobs and dials and change yeah. the orientation. And you and can change the orientation. You yeah. can like, this is in like a sort of vertical orientation. You can make it be long ways. You can, you can do a lot with this. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and that's actually currently available now. Um, 400 bucks. For the streamer expensive. kit. Yeah. With, Oh, the kit. At, yeah. That has, yeah. It. As it is right now, like with those components. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, so some interesting uh, sort of like streaming and lifestyle stuff from Cooler Master there. Um, we'll move on to MSI. And a thing that was like the most, one of the most hyped things before the show was their Claw Gaming Portable. Uh, Ryan got to play on it a little bit. Yep. Um, so this is going to be an all Intel device. So here you can see it there. Um, we have we saw the, of course, first we saw the Steam Deck. Then we saw the ROG Ally, and then we have the Lenovo Legion Go, and now we have the MSI Claw. Um, so Intel processor, Intel Arc graphics on this. So Intel and Intel, uh, which should allow them to better optimize it, I would say, for the hardware that's inside. Um, three different variants, three different price points. So it's going to start at $699 for the base version. That's going to have a core Ultra 5 in 512 gigs of storage. $749 for the middle model. That will have a core Ultra 7 155H um, and 16 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage. Wait, that's the high version. Oh, I said it wrong. Wait. Oh. Ultra 5, 745 for the middle. We don't know the specs for the middle model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, right. the top model will have the... Core Ultra 7, 155H, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and one terabyte of storage. Uh, available in March. How did it feel in the hand? Like, how did it feel playing it? Because we have video views It was playing. comfy. Like, um, it was, it was, you were still on like a uh, security cable. So you couldn't, oh, like, yeah, you couldn't like really move, move it around. around. But yeah. uh, no, it felt good. Um, it's not like it felt hot or anything. And it had been on for hours on end, right? Um, uh, showing, I think it was running, uh, not that one there in your hand, but they had another one off to the side was running. Um, Assassin's Creed. Say, yeah, I wanted to say Prince of Persia, but yeah, Assassin's Creed title. Um, and no, it was it was good. Yeah, it has a 17 inch uh, or yeah, 17. <laughs> it has a seven <laughs> no. inch uh, HD display, 120 yeah. hertz refresh rate. 
Um, yep. Yeah, it's just another option. And I think gaming handheld, like, as much as, like, I don't have a use for it, I think a lot of people do. And I think this is kind of like the next thing. And it gives you a lot, obviously, it gives you a lot more uh, customization compared to something like a DS or any of those other things. Oh, yeah. Um, just because it's a it's a PC, so you can kind of run whatever you want on it. Uh, so, yeah, really interesting to see that. Uh, I, I think it will do well for them. Uh, but then we were talking about those uh, M.2 coolers. This is one of them. This is built onto their drive. So this is their Spadium M580 uh, M.2 Frozer Plus. So they've updated the actual cooling unit. You can see, Ryan's right, it's like three inches. It's, it's a big That's cooler, but it will keep a Gen 5 NVMe SSD incredibly cool. They also added RGB lighting on the top. Uh, again, watch the video. You can you can see all of that. Um, the it's going to be available one, two, and four terabytes. Uh, no word yet on when this specific version will be coming out. Also, another version that may never come out, but they were showing it, and it was incredibly cool. Is their Spadium M580 M.2 Frozer Liquid, and it's called Frozer Liquid because this is an AIO. On top of an M.2. It's so this cool. so awesome. See the little pipes here and, and all of that. It's a fully enclosed M.2. One connection um, to your motherboard. Man, that's awesome. It's I mean, it's it's big, but just seeing it was like, all right, this is neat. This but it's is not like, cool I idea. mean, for a fully enclosed AIO, it's not. I mean, here's sure. this is an M.2 drive, so it's not like it's massive per yeah. se. You know what I mean? Um, but I thought this was so cool just to see like a fully enclosed AIO on top of an M.2. Yeah. Uh, no word yet on when that's going to come out or if it's right. ever going to come out. It was just, uh, here's kind of what we're, here's it, what we here's, can do. Yeah. Here's what we're working on. Uh, they also have fans and I would say, watch the video on these fans. Uh, these are their MPG easy 120 ARGB fans. Um, and Fantex, I believe, owns the patent for the clip together fan. So, and again, we talked about these are the fans that clip together. Very uh, easy to do. Um, and the way that they're getting around the patent is here's one. I loved how these worked, by the yeah. way. Um, so there's this little uh, magnetic thing that clips the two fans together. So on this side you would have your RGB that come through here. And then on this side, the clip that you pull out or the uh, magnetic thing that you pull out is going to be your power. So that's how they get around the yeah. patent from Fantex. Um, and again, I really liked how these worked. Like it was just, again, it's magnetic. So it just like goes right in there. Super makes easy to do. For, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like makes... this one is pulled out and it's the power one because... The left fan is still spinning and is lit up. The right one is not spinning, but is still lit up. Yeah. So we know that on the other side, we've got RGB, the RGB mm -hmm. connection still going. You pop this thing back in and that fan spins up as yeah. do the other fans that might be, you know, chained on. So for, it's and really neat. It's just so simple. These are going to be available black and white, um, three packs, as you can see here. Why didn't we think of this earlier? That's what I want to know. Because I mean, you wired all up your these system. Cables. Oh my yeah, gosh. It's with all the RGB and yeah. So these are really cool from MSI. They were also showing their Project Zero. Um, these are the motherboards that have the connections on the back. This is going to be a big thing. Um, we've we saw a lot of cases specifically made for these, so this is going to be a standard. Um, so you can see all the connections on the back. They were showing three different motherboards as well as two cases that they two of their own cases that show these um what did you think of this like we've talked about this before is this something you see i think it'll we'll probably end up with more of it going forward do you think this will be the standard i think probably. yes yeah i think yes i think it makes sense like, i don't it mind make... the cables so much but uh yeah i i think it, it makes enough sense to change things up mm -hmm. um yeah, and I think it's going to change up case design as well. I think we're going to end up with bigger backsides, right? Like a, where, or actually just wider cases because, yeah, you're going to have to have room for all these connections on the back. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, it'll be interesting. But yeah, I think you're probably right. It'll that's the way we're gonna go. Yeah. Um, and they also had probably the best looking graphics card. Uh, we did see RTX 40 super announcement and launch. This is their 4080 expert card. And again, watch the video because it will give you more context on this card and give you a better look of it. Uh, a lot of people are calling it the cheese grater card. <laughs> but it has this sort of die cast uh, design here. It looks amazing. Um, like I said, we didn't see a ton of graphics cards, really. Uh, because, like, for the most part, they weren't new because, <coughs> excuse me, every company had their super cards but like they were the same it's like it's the strix card it's the yeah. you know even like msi's other cards it's they like, had a whole oh, lineup of them yeah yeah like they're the same design it's nothing new this was new and it looked amazing it's a big card um like i said check out the video uh we have a short video too on on all of our social channels if you want to see uh what this card looks like but a really awesome card here from MSI as well. Um, moving on to Corsair. So Corsair, they like emailed me because I initially emailed part. them and I was like, hey, come to CES. They're like, no, we're not coming to CES. I'm like, okay. And then like a week before CES, they're like, hey, we're coming to CES last minute. I was like, okay. So, but it, I, I would say they did show a really cool case. So it's been yep. a long time since we saw a dual compartment case. It was their Crystal Series 680X. If you go on our website, we have a review. We have a video on it. That was their dual compartment. And then dual compartment became like 11 Dynamic was like, and everybody's doing that same thing. Yep. Well, Cooler Master is, is going to do it as well. So this was their 680X or 6500X. Um, it's going to fit the large, like this is the 4090 Strix. It's going to fit the largest graphics cards. Largest motherboards, and this case is designed. You can see all the holes here and the holes on the side. This case is designed for ASUS's BTF and MSI's Project Zero. So, if you do end up wanting to get, you know, if that does become the standard, you will be covered with this. You could do 360, 360, 360 as far as cooling. You can also, the top and the bottom will support 140s, but they won't support a 420 millimeter radiator. And then the side mounts will support all 120s. The side mount can be moved forward as well if you weren't going to do water cooling uh, in the side mounts. Um, easy to open side panel. It swings open. Um, lots of cool stuff in this. They improved um, their grommets too. You know, they were talking about, you know how like the rubber grommets for cable management, they always like popping out and everything. Yeah, yeah. I using didn't a, dual, that, yeah. a dual uh, material. Yeah rubber there so they'll stay in place but the little flaps are flexible which i think will be pretty and they nice. have these little clips all around where your fans go yeah. Yeah. and they're specifically made for their fan cable um so like it would just clip right onto their specific fan cable which is really nice there as well so they have that like i said here's here's what the inside looks like it it is a nice looking case um and then they have a smaller version so they have a 2500x which is a micro atx case Still going to be able to support the largest graphics cards. Again, um, 360, 360, 240 over here. Um, and as you can see, this is a black version. There's going to be black and white. And then there's going to be like these panels that you can buy for the front and the top. You'll be able to buy uh, these different color panels for the cases. These are their first ones. They may have other ones coming down the line. Um, but these are the color options that you'll get to get like these sort of like, I would call them accessory panels that you can get um, from Corsair. And then, oh, they had these AIOs as well. So these are just sort of caps that will go on their current AIOs. Um, so I thought this one looked awesome. It just like, I don't know, just looks a little different. <laughs> it looks good, but it reminds me so much of the design that Cooler Master had already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, you could print up all sorts of stuff or swap in a fan. Yeah, so they have a couple that are like top caps here. And then this one is a fan. So this will cool off your VRM um, around your CPU as well. So some pretty cool things. And one of the coolest things and one of the most useful things is they redesigned 
the fan screw. So if you've installed case fans with the, the screws, it's annoying. It's incredibly annoying. You probably have to turn the screwdriver at least four times, if not five times. Yeah, yeah. This, and I tested this, this is one and a half turns. And it's like so easy to go into. Like a lot of them you have to like press really hard. And yeah, this is it, a, st- a self-tapping screw. We should yeah. clarify. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, they were pretty awesome. Yeah, so these are going to come with a lot of their higher end fans and eventually some cases and they'll sell them as standalone. So that's pretty cool. Um, one of the more useful things we saw at CES, I would say. So, so yeah, really cool to see that we'll move on to deep cool. And I would say deep cool was one of the most complete boosts that I saw. I would say, I think like I liked every product that they had for the most part. Yeah. Uh, they didn't have a ton of products, but, Every product that they did have, I, I did like. Um, first, they have their AIOs. So they have the Mystique and the Mystique 24360, which is going to be this one right here. And then they have the Mystique 420 Plus, which is this larger one over here. Two different types of fans. Um, the 420 Plus will have their, what are these called? <clears throat> these uh, are FT series, I think think right yeah they're called something but they they have um white leds around so the good. center it looks really cool again watch our video for this um and then both of these will have a display larger display on the 420 the really cool thing about these is that they're gonna have built 64 gigabytes of built-in memory on the aio so you can like load your own stuff like you can load movies load a movie on there yeah yeah whatever you make whatever you want to put on there you can go ahead and do it but it has built-in memory uh which is really cool and again if you don't want to display a movie you you know you'll be able to show system stats and things like this and really sleek and refined look again that's what we know deep cool for so you're going to have that with with those which is really cool um and then they have a new Assassin. We just reviewed their Assassin 4. This is the Assassin 4S, a smaller version, but same performance. And there's no front fan. Yep. So there's only a fan in the center. They've updated the fan um, to one of their new 140 millimeter FDB fans. And that's how they're able to get that performance. So there's the fan in the center, just a smaller version same performance uh which is really cool so pretty excited to uh take a look at that whenever that comes available it's gonna be both in black and white um and then they have some new cases so this is the ch160 very small and compact mini itx case it's going to support three slot graphics cards up to 305 millimeters as you can see they have one of their assassin coolers in here Supports CPU coolers as tall as 172 millimeters, which is crazy for a mini ITX system. And then SFX and SFXL power supplies in here has a handle on it. So you can go ahead and pick it up, which is nice. Great little LAN LAN rig, I'd say. Um, And then they have a digital version, which has a slightly different orientation. But it's going to have this section down here that's going to have their digital display. Going to show system stats in real time, which is really cool. Um, on that. And then they have their CH360 and CH360 digital. These are micro ATX cases. So they have the, what is it? The five, e, the 560, I think is their full, full tower, not full tower, but that will support ATX. These will support micro ATX, white and black, high airflow. Um, and they use this sort of cutoff design. So your tempered glass is only showing on the top part of the case. And then the digital version here will have the digital display that will show system stats. So overall, really good new products coming from Deepcool. Um, Excited to take a look at these when they uh, do become available. And we're about halfway done. We got a lot of CES stuff. I didn't realize we covered so much stuff. Get rolling. I know. So Height Height had two products. And these are two products that we saw last year at, at CES. Yeah. Uh, so they've been in development for a while. One so that, that was sh- behind closed doors. Yeah, one we couldn't tell you about last year. We we did see it initially. And the second one uh, we saw, I don't know if it was behind closed doors or not, but we saw it. 
Um, so first they have their keyboard. This is their Keeb TKL. Definitely a different looking mechanical keyboard than, than most, I'd say. Um, kind of this transparent body that has a shitload of RGB LEDs in it. 155 on the back, I think. Yeah, just crazy amount of RGB LEDs. Um, hot swappable switches. They use their own in-house built. Uh, they're called Fluffy Lavender Linear Switches. But also, one thing that's really cool is the multimedia keys. They have, they use this sort of, they call it like a flappy switch. And it's like, it really is like a, you have yeah. to test it, but it's pretty cool. They use a different switch for those. You have these rollers at the top uh, that you can set to different things. Everything is customizable. Of course, the RGB lighting is customizable. Uh, TKL, obviously. Uh, $179.99 on that. And then they have their AIO. And this is, we've been talking about this AIO for a while since it was, uh, I think at Computex, it was first like shown or leaked. Uh, the interesting thing about this, it's called the Thick Q60. It's called Thick because the radiator is thicker than most. Um, and it, that gives you more surface area, which means you'll get better performance overall. Um, and so this is what, a two... 40 or yep. is it two or is it 280 240 yeah 52 million 52 millimeters thick on the radiator 240 millimeter but again having the thicker radiator means you're gonna have better performance on top of that you have this display here which is rather big it almost looks like a cell phone um yes. but you can display whatever you want on it it works with their software they were showing us some really cool things where they sort of like hacked spotify <laughs> so spotify like art would show up on here they've done some really cool stuff with their software um on all of this but the cool thing about this too is that this aio will act as a central hub for some of their other devices like you can see there some lighting over here these all will connect into here and this acts as a central hub for all of those devices uh which is cool as well if you know if you're going to get into like their ecosystem and again, if you are buying the AIO, you should because then you can buy all the lights and, and everything that will yep. go with these, um, as well as fan, as well as their fans. All their fans can plug directly into here, and this is the central hub for everything in your system, which I think is pretty cool. So, um, so yeah, that that was that's all they were really showing as far as like what was new, new. Uh, but it's good to finally see those products come out because, like I said, we saw them last year at CES. So yeah. So yeah, uh, moving on from. There we went. Inwin. Inwin had three really three cases. Um, the two that I did want to talk about first was the F5. This is their larger case, sort of a larger follow-up to their 303 that we reviewed. If you're not familiar with that case, it has like the top cooling up here that really allows you to show off, like if you're using yep. an AIO. Um, but sleek and elegant design this is the white version there's also sort of like a bluish version again watch our video that's in the article um but this comes with like a built-in graphics card uh uh what's it called not a riser a um support here and just looks really really sleek and nice um yeah really excited to get one of those into review and then they had their POC one and this was a really interesting case they had a flat pack case that they sold last year. We saw it last year at CES. This came much like this, very flat packed. And then with the previous one, you would actually bend the metal. But Inwin saw that a lot of people didn't want to bend the metal. They, yep. they thought they were going to break something. So what they've done is they come up with these really cool rubber hinges. So again, it's going to come flat packed like this. And you use these rubber hinges to put the case together. And then it ends up looking something like this. Pretty interesting. Obviously, not everybody's cup of tea, but I think it would be a cool building experience for a lot of people. You can kind of like you're not just, you know, building your computer, you're building the case as well. Um, like I said, pretty, pretty interesting. And again, this is all aluminum, too. So it's not like crappy stuff. I mean, this is, again, big. Yeah, the previous pieces. one you had to bend was like steel. Um, yeah, this one is real, like I feel much more refined. Um and maybe where the first one should have been. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this one's, this one was neat. Yeah. So those were the two cases from them. Um, but like I said, pretty, pretty interesting cases uh, from Inwin. 
And then we have Lexar. They showed us all of our storage. And I love their suite because like it's so good. They just had a wall of all of their stuff. And then they had all the specs right there. So like when I was doing the video, again, watch the video uh, that is in the article here. Watch this video. But they had it like, like right here, like they have all the specs, everything you need to like do your video uh, right there. So and they're Velcroed. Uh, so you could like take them off and yeah, show take, the them off, better, take them off the wall. Yeah. Slap them back on. Yeah. Um, so really quick, they have a new version of their Aries RGB. It's going to look like they didn't have it, but it's going to look like this uh, with a more refined heat spreader and uh, RGB design here. And that new memory will be available in 8,400 and 8,000 megahertz um, speeds there. Then they have their new professional NM1090. This is going to be their Fizon E26 based drive, 12,000 megabytes a second read, 11,000 megabytes a second write, actively cooled with an ARGB fan, uh, which I think is going to look pretty cool. Then they have their professional NM800. We already reviewed both of these. There's a heatsink, non heatsink version. The big change with this is that it's going to come in an eight terabyte capacity. Uh, this year, which is a lot for a uh, for an NVMe SSD. They also have their Play 2230. So this is a M.2 2230. So as you can see, very, very tiny here. Uh, this is a Gen 4 drive, 5,200 megabytes a second read, 4,700 megabytes a second write. This is the upgrade for your Lenovo Legion Go, for your ROG Ally, for your Steam Deck. Um so nice to see that from them as oops from them as well. And then they have some portable drives. So they have their professional SL600. This is basically the same drive as their gaming drive as their was it the SL660 Blaze. This is the same drive just no RGB lighting. So USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, 2000 megabytes a second read, 2000 megabytes a second write. They're also going to have a rugged drive. So this is their Armor 700. Again, USB 3.2 Gen 2x2. Hard to see in the photo, but this is like all rubberized. IP65 rated on this as well. So if you need a drive that you can more or less throw around, this this is it. Um, and then they'll have, this thing was like was super, fine. super thin. This was their SL500. Uh, 2,000 megabytes a second read, 1,800 megabytes a second write on that. So lots of storage in you know new DDR5 from Lexar. Excited to get those portable SSDs into review. Um, and then be quiet. Their big thing is they're, they're making everything white. Um, white. Yeah. So all of their K, all their, their newer cases, they're making white. So they have their dark base pro 901 white. And then they well, have the nice thing about them though, is all the white matches, right? Yes. That's one thing they really spent a lot of time on was making sure that the white metal matches the white plastic. Cause in some cases it, it doesn't. doesn't. Yeah. And, this, and like, great. Attention, to, like all the cabling is white as well yep. um, on everything in these. So you're going to have a Dark Base Pro 901 white. That's going to be the same price as the current Dark Base 901. And then you have a Dark Base 701 white. They did make a change on this one. They made the diffuser for the RGB lighting wider. Uh, so that change brought the price up 10 bucks. So this will be a $10 premium over the black version. Obviously a little bit different too because you're getting like just more pronounced RGB lighting on that. You're also going to get um, white versions of all of their fans. So you can see them all right here. So that's going to be a Silent Wings Pro 4 white, a Silent Wings 4 white, and a Pure Wings 3 white, um, all white versions. So again, if you want to use Be Quiet fans in your white build, you'll have them now, which is nice. And then they had a 90 degree uh, 12 VH PWR power cable as well individually sleeve that's going to be about 17 bucks so yeah some nice little updates there from be quiet let's see who They're, they had a really cool fan wall too which i think you show in the we had a video yeah watch the video yeah it's um awesome. yeah funny. yeah watch the video in the article um i'm in front of the fan wall when i do the video so uh and then razor razor booth was fun i i had fun at the razor booth uh <laughs> i got the, the, they had a doctor there giving you prescribing you uh, gaming chairs, which I feel was sort of a it was part. like your settings. 
right? Like how high you should be yeah, sitting. Yeah, but and... I feel like it was sort of a farce, but at the same time, like it was a real doctor and he was like yeah. telling you how high you need to have your chair. And it was like some good information. I still have the paper that he gave me with all my like things that I, uh, how high I need to be and, you know, everything like that. And Ryan took some pictures of me with the doctor, which is kind of funny. Oh, yeah. Uh, but before we get to the chair that the doctor was uh, seating us at, they had this Project Esther, uh, which was sort of like their haptic <coughs> feedback. You put it on a chair. It gives you haptic feedback depending on what's going on. Ryan wasn't the biggest fan of it. I, I didn't test it. Ryan did. Um, I'm just not a fan of haptic feedback stuff in general. I never have been. Like, okay. ever, like early PlayStation, like my... PS1, I had Gran Turismo and I had like the, the controller that did have the rumble, the aftershock controller, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't mind it like for driving when you'd like hit the bumps on the side of a racetrack or something and you could feel that. That's like the only time I've ever liked haptic feedback on anything. So like I'm not the ideal person for this. Okay. Um there it may be amazing for somebody else. Now, that being said, like there were times when like there was a mech warrior demo and you had access to four different weapons. And depending on the weapon you fired, it would give you a different like feeling. Right. So they had like a, a big cannon and it would feel like just a, a thud type of um, uh, shot. And then they had like a laser type one and it was very like a staticky fast movement type of feeling. So it was definitely like tuned for games and, and things like that. So if you're into this, definitely probably i think something to check out I, I i think this this will be expensive but i don't think it will be expensive as some of like the haptic sort of suit yeah and i think a lot of those haptic sort of suits aren't really made for gaming right so razor is such a big brand that they're going to work with publishers and they're going to really optimize this right. specifically for games and obviously razor software already plugs into all of your games anyways if you have the Razer software. So, yep. um, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't get the test. so I can't really say much about it, but it just good. Like I said, as you can see, it goes right onto your gaming chair. So it's not like, uh, we saw last year, we saw those haptic feedback chairs from, uh, Cooler Master. Cooler Master. Yeah. So this just goes on top of the chair, which I do like because you don't want to have to buy a brand new chair. If you already have right. one, you may not like the chair that they have to, you know what I mean? So this gives you yep. the ability and it gives you the ability to be like, like bring it over a friend's house or whatever it may be. Now, no word yet on when this is going to come out or pricing or anything like that. Uh, they were just showing it off. They also had the gaming chair, which I got to try out. Uh, their, their Isker V2, um, of course, second generation of the Isker. And the really interesting thing that I liked about this you can kind of see it right here. Actually, there's one on both sides, but I believe this is the one. The lumbar support, you use this knob and you kind of turn the knob and it moves the lumbar support forward and back to give you more support. I thought that was really cool. Uh, as Ryan said, this this is a chair that he sits down at and his feet aren't off the ground either. Yeah. Um, lots of customization with this really fine-tuned gaming chair. Um, this one is going to be 649. It is available now. And Razer is going to make a monitor bar light here as well. So uh we all know the Ben Q one, that's kind of like the famous one or one that everybody uses. Uh, but Razer will have one. It's gonna be regular color, but it will do RG I believe it will do RGB, I think. It's well, I mean, it's like dual zoned, so it can like yeah. shoot down and yeah, I can shoot well. down and it can shoot back as well, give you some backlighting and stuff. Um, so that was that was pretty cool to see. Just seeing some other sort of like lifestyle kind of products from Razer. Right. Right. They also had their Razer Blade 16 OLED, uh 16 inch display up to a Core i9 14900HX RTX 40 series up to 4090. Um just a really sleek look. I mean, that 240 hertz OLED in the laptop is just, and this thing was like not, I mean, it's 16 inches, but like it was not. It doesn't feel bulky at all. It doesn't feel bulky or anything like that. Uh, starting around $3,000 for that one. And then they had the Razer Blade 18. This is their big boy. 
Uh, 4K, 165 hertz refresh rate on the display. Obviously, you can get this in uh, the highest configurations because it's the 18 inch. But the really cool thing, and this was a surprising thing, is that it had Thunderbolt 5, a Thunderbolt 5 connection on it. Uh, we just started talking. I mean, we're just seeing devices get Thunderbolt 4 connectivity really and it really e just even be supported by a lot of things and they were showing thunderbolt 5 running four different monitors from a single type c connection uh which is awesome um yeah no price on this it's going to be expensive obviously um yeah it's looked awesome like you can see in the image there they had the three larger 4k yeah. screen it was like three i forget the size but they were 4k screens yeah. And like maybe 120 hertz or 144 each. And it was just running them off that single cable yeah, on the right side no of the deal. laptop. 120 gigs of uh, bandwidth out of that. So, uh, yeah, plenty of throughput for whatever you want to do with it. Yeah, just just some cool stuff. And it's it's cool to see like this wasn't expected. Like Thunderbolt 5 no. wasn't expecting to see it at CES. And it was just like there. Like if you didn't if you didn't know, you would never even notice it. But it was just oh, single connection. Um, so that was, that was it for Razer. Uh, always fun to visit their booth. They always have fun stuff going on. Uh, Ryan got a bunch of their gum. I what did. Is it called? What is it called? It's a uh, respawn. I got some right here. Yeah. Yeah. The it's, I mean, it's made by five gum. Okay. Okay. But it's a uh, mental focus. Pomegranate watermelon is what we got, but it has like, yeah, vitamins and green tea extracts. So I think it's supposed to give you a little bit of, you know, okay. clarity okay. and focus. So I had a piece of them. Yeah. I had a piece. It was good. It's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was like in another zone when I'm at CES. I, I wouldn't say like it, it gave me any off the like, maybe I'll, I'll choose some tonight when we're playing games. Uh, All right. we'll see. Um, and then Asrock, they had a bunch of OLEDs. We won't go over all of them because we're already, this is almost, we're almost an hour and a half into the show. Uh, but the thing that was interesting about Asrock, and I actually talked to uh, the person that they had there. He was like the, the vice president I always want to know with companies, you know, ASRock, we know from motherboards, they've just gone into graphics cards um, and it's good to see that's been a thing for them and they've done really well. And they, they got into displays like last year and I asked them, I was like, so is this like a product line that you're going to be continuing? And he's like, yeah, we we're going to put out a bunch of models this year and it's something that we're really pushing for. Uh, so it's going to be, it's really cool to, to see that and like, Cause I asked him like point blank. I'm like, you know, you guys, you guys used to make like routers. Like you don't really do that anymore. <laughs> you know? So it was, it was, it's good to see that they're really behind this. They have new OLEDs. They have new fast, really fast, high refresh rate monitors. And one of the cooler things about a lot of their monitors too, is their monitors have the Wi-Fi antennas built into them. So if you do have a, um, uh, what's it called? If you do have a motherboard that has the Wi-Fi antennas, instead of using the one that comes with your motherboard, you connect it to the monitor, and then you have a better Wi-Fi, a larger Wi-Fi yeah. antenna. Um, and that's just like right on the back of the monitor, and they provide the cables and everything. Um, they have a bunch of displays, um, you know, on here. And check out the article. Uh, we go last, over all. Oh, go ahead. As I say, the last one on there, I believe, is a 520 hertz monitor. Which one? This one? The FF, uh, the very last yeah, one. Yeah, the PG27 FFX2A. Yep. Uh, yep. Like Ryan said, uh, crazy product names. Um, but yeah. That this, was the easiest one too. Yeah, this one is a 520 hertz refresh rate. Again, they were showing the uh, Blur Bluster. Blur, blur Busters. Bl yeah. Say that three times fast. Blur <laughs> Busters uh, motion test showing the 520 FPS. And it's so fast, you really can't even capture it like on taking a photo. Oh, of course, this is with my iPhone that I took this picture, but um, you're not showing it. But oh, hey, I podcast every go. once in a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is this is the display 520 hertz, which is incredibly fast. Uh, 1920 by 1080 display um, on there. Just like we yeah. talked, right? It's like you get that high refresh rate, but it's only a 1080 screen. But yeah. if you're like wanting the fastest stuff, yeah, that's, that's what you're gonna there, get. There you go. They also did have um, the B B seven sixty i Lightning oh. Wi Fi. So almost every Intel fourteenth uh, gen supported 
mini ITX motherboard was like a 10 plus two plus one power face design. This is going to be a 14 plus two plus one or plus one plus one. Plus one. Plus um, one. Yeah. Giving you just being able to use more power um, and giving you more stable power for running something like a 14900K on a mini ITX platform. So this is going to be coming soon. Um, and then they also are going to have a B650 Steel Legend Wi-Fi. Um, the interesting thing about this one compared to the B650E Steel Lightning Wi-Fi, that, Steel Legend Wi-Fi that's out, is this one does have an all-white PCB. So the other one does not. This one does. Uh, and it looks awesome because it's all-white uh, PCB on that. So cool stuff from ASRock as well. Lots of yeah. monitors um from them too and then finally we have cyber power pc they have some of the coolest cases that you cannot buy <laughs> it's it's you can't buy them yet right they're working on it yeah so um of course you know cyber power they make uh they you know that's where you get your custom pc they showed some of the coolest cases that you can get with their custom p with you know right. if you order a custom pc from them no word on when these cases are going to, if they're going to come out, where if you're going to be able to buy them by themselves, that would be kind of nice because some of them are really cool. Yeah. Uh, especially like this, this one right here. Um, you know, and this, this one's really cool too, because it brings the mesh all the way around and you can bring this front piece out. This is their Aventus 360 V. They have their, amethyst 360 m which is again just a really cool design on the front of the case uh this is the one that i thought was super cool this is their yep. Am amethyst 360 s and this has these front panels that are wood um that go through and then you can take this piece off and you know you can like you can see them over here um these look really really cool again you can't buy these cases <laughs> uh then you had the lumia uh 360b which is here which again is much like that uh yin one with the sort yep. of panels here and the lighting that kind of shines through them but this one has a sylvania 360 v series that <clears throat> that has the wood on the front that just looked awesome but again you have to buy a cyber power pc at least currently to get any of these cases Right. Um, and then they did have a Fantex NB5. They they have updated this themselves by adding the lighting on the front here. Uh, you can see this light bar. That's kind of what CyberPower has added to their rendition of it, which is pretty cool. Um, and then, do we not have pictures of the... Oh, that's that's the other one. So this is the, the Prism 360V. I think this looks... If you're doing the vertical graphics card, this looks amazing. It looks good. Um, so yeah, really, really nice looking case from them as well. And then they have their Tracer uh, 8 Ultra water-cooled laptop. And this was really, really cool to see. So laptop looks normal, but this little thing is your radiator and your fan and everything. And this is your liquid cooling unit. And it goes right into the back of the laptop. And it's like plug and play, like... It, yep. you can just plug it in and disconnect it at any time. And it knows and, that it, you've plugged it in. It yeah. kicks on and starts working. You don't have to like tell your machine, Hey, I've plugged this thing in start using it. It just does it. Yeah. So it's really cool to see a, a liquid cool laptop that like just worked so well. Like it wasn't like we can't disconnect it because water is going to get it. like, it was just, it just worked really well. Um, so that that's pretty cool. And they are offering that in a couple different of their laptop variations as well. So Really cool stuff from CyberPower. I really hope they start selling their own cases. Um, I don't. I don't know if that's really going to happen, but they did have some really cool ones. So, so that is it from CES. So much stuff as we're uh, like a, an hour and a half into the podcast. The podcast is usually yeah. an hour. So if you guys stuck with us through all of that, um, yeah, awesome. Uh, also, I did want to talk about it really quick. So. The week of CES, we dropped three reviews as well because they were all launch reviews. Not going to go over them in the podcast, but one was the Cooler Master Encore 100, Ma Encore 100 Max. This is a mini ITX case. It is awesome. We have a review and full video on our YouTube, so check that out. We also did a, I guess you would call it a review, but it was the Fizon E26. The E26 has been out for a while, but they have 
a really optimized version of the E26, which is called their E26 Maximum. Now, Faison's going to sell this to, to different companies. They're not actually making the drive, but Faison sent us a test drive. So this is going to be 14 gigabytes per second, which is crazy. Um, so we did a review of that. We, and then we also did a review of the Corsair K55 Core. This is a $40 keyboard, um, not mechanical, but it has all the RGB lighting and it is spill proof. So it has the holes on the bottom. So if you spill something, it filters right through. Um, we have that. And then just this week, we also released our review of the Corsair A15. This is an air cooler from Corsair. So they're getting back into the air cooler game. And I was really impressed with the performance. So check out that review as well. Everything's on the website. So much good. Like the past two weeks have been crazy. Reviews, CES, everything. There's a that's lot. Going on. If, you, if you got time, there's a lot of content to check. Yeah, out we have sure. so much content, uh, reviews, videos, everything. Um, and then talking about what we have coming up next week. So talking about Yin, we're taking a look at some of their power supplies. Uh, so we're taking a look at their Pegasus power supplies. They're sending, they sent us the 1,000 watt and the 850 watt. If you guys know with all of our power supply content, it's not like a full review because we don't have everything to do with crazy load tests, but just an overview showing what, showing you what you're going to get uh, from these power supplies. I will also be taking a look at the Lee & Lee Streamer Plus V2s. These are their awesome RGB extension cables. I have the 24 pin and then I have two of these, the, uh, the eight pin PCI express. So I'm going to put the eight pin PCI express in my, in my build here. It's going to look, it's going to look awesome. It'll look good. Gonna, yeah. I'm really excited to, uh, put, put those in there. And then also taking a look at the drop alt V2 mechanical keyboard. This is a great little keyboard, um, from drop. Uh, this is their V2 version. Nice. Um, yeah, really excited to take a look at that as well. So lots of cool stuff coming. And we have like so much cool stuff coming as well. Uh, so I'm really excited for all, like I said, all the stuff that we have coming. Ryan has a review that he's, a couple of reviews that he's working on as well. Yeah. So yeah, lots of cool stuff. So uh, as we come to the end, uh, we do have a question and we'll, we'll frame this question around CES. What is the best thing? that you saw at CES, the thing that blew you away, the thing that, yeah, or yeah, what, what was it? I think I have two, like okay. uh, related to the stuff we looked at, and one of them was one we covered. I really like the liquid cooled Spadium drive from MSI. I just think okay. it's neat, right? Like okay. there's this tiny little compact all-in-one liquid cooler attached to this drive. Do I think it's really practical? No, not really, like it, but it's neat. Um, but when we were walking around on the last day, and well, first day and last day, we were walking around the show floor and Samsung's micro LED TVs, these like 8K displays, micro LED or micro, yeah, micro LED OLED, just they're amazing. They look so awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think that's those are that's probably it for me. Okay. Okay. What about for you? For me, I really liked. And we didn't put it in our article. We did get to see it. Was Asus had a foldable OLED mm, uh, yeah. external monitor. So everybody knows, like, you know, you have your normal external monitors. You can buy them for like 150 bucks. They had a uh, one that was an OLED, which on by itself, like, who's buying an external OLED? But on right. top of that, it was foldable. So the, the glass folds, much like, you know, your Samsung phone folds. But this folds like basically down to a laptop and, but it, if you unfold it, it's like a, a full 17 inch display. I thought that was completely not practical and it's going to be so, yeah, it would be one? so expensive. I don't, they're not really going to come out with it. It was just like yeah, something to show. It was really cool. Um, foldable glass is just cool in general. Um, I think so that, that was really cool to see. I would say that's probably the coolest thing I saw. I really did like the transparent micro LED display. Too. That was really cool. We put out a, video, a short video on that. Um, it will. It's going to be really cool to see because you're. I don't. I mean, maybe you'll see it in a consumer product, but like I could see it more at like stadiums yes. and things like that, and and yep. other type of 
things. So I think those were like the two really, really cool things that I saw. Because if you had like a super high, like scale screen, like think of like football games or whatever, like you could have a, a screen that takes up the whole viewing space and show stats over it, but you can still see through it. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's there's or like even in the, there. even in the, like the, you know, what do you call that? Like when you're, when you're like behind the stands and you could put one up there. So like you could still see down into the stadium, but like you could have all the stats displayed on the screen. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be like the first real application of stuff like that. But yeah, that was really cool to see as well, but just so much stuff at CES. And like I said, we are going to be pumping out a bunch of like short form content on social media of a lot of the stuff we saw at CES. So definitely stay tuned for all of that stuff. Lots of stuff coming. Um, yeah, great. Just great CS overall. Uh, like I said, I feel really good about it this year. Yeah, um, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, we're going to jump off here, and Ryan's going to uh, get the stream going for, for our gaming stream. So if you guys don't know, if you're new here, we do do a gaming stream after every podcast. It's on Twitch. Ryan runs that stream. Uh, we typically play Apex Legends. I assume it's where we're going to be playing tonight. Yeah. Um, so jump on over there, twitch.tv forward slash think computers. Ryan will have that stream up. Hopefully no glitches. Usually when Ryan moves his camera stuff around or something, <laughs> we, we have some glitches or something like that, but I don't think we will. Uh, we'll, we'll get it going for you guys. So head on over there. If you want to keep on hanging out with us again, twitch.tv forward slash think computers. And thanks everybody for coming out and we will see everybody next week.